Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. So Simplicity has come out with some new fall patterns and we get to check them out today. Um, I had heard from a few of you, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago that these were already uh, in the drawers at Hobby Lobby, even though there was no catalog. So that's interesting fun fact if you're ever looking to really get ahead of the curve. Um, but they finally went online uh, last week, I think. And so here I am. Okay, so fall patterns. All right, this very first one is a Mrs. Jumper. And jumper... I guess can mean like it's like a uh, overalls, right? So this one is, I mean, pretty interesting. I don't know about these pockets. Uh, oh, here's another version with like a handkerchief hem. I do like this crossover, <clears throat> this crossover bodice. That's cute. Even with the collared shirt, that's styled nicely. Looks better from here. Um, I don't know why this is so big and open, that pocket. I just can't imagine that looking super great on, well, my figure with, you know, hips. <laughs> it would just be even wider. But look how cool this little vent uh, is in the back and these cute little gathers. It looks like a center back uh, invisible zipper. Okay, so there she is. So, you know, maybe it's just the fabric that they use is a little more structured because in here, it seems to want to drape a lot more and this one is not really draping at all. So maybe if you chose a lighter weight, I'm assuming that this is like a wool or something. If you chose like a lighter weight something that had some drape to it, maybe it would fall down better. Um, and then this is her version and then you can like just mix and match the um, bodices and the skirts interesting let's see what the envelope back will tell us cotton crepe gabardine linen wool ponty all right the sizing is the alpha numeric and it's partially lined and oh here are some garment measurements for the bust I guess I don't know I still like I would like to see the hip um, but the bust is better than nothing so I don't know this is I mean it's definitely artful I'm getting definite art vibe art smock vibe from it it's just this this is not I don't know who could pull that off. You know, like that looks very structured. Here, yeah. You know what I'm saying though? If this fabric was a little bit drapier, this might even be a ponty. I can't really tell, but um, if it were a little bit drapier, this would fall closer to the body and it would stick out. It would not stick out as much. But the concept is cool. You could also probably, I don't know how hard it would be to redraft this to not be drapey, you know, or even just make this version, you know, one, one length all the way around. That would be a cute version too. All right, next up, oh my, um, we've got a dress or tunic, skirt, and pant. Okay, so it's like a little wardrobe. You guys know I love those. I'm guessing this is the pant with the dress over it. There's the little tunic. You can't see anything because her hands are covering it. There's the dress with boots. That's kind of cute. That must be the tunic and the skirt together. All very voluminous. Oh, there's another pant. So now I don't know what's going on. This just looks like a clergyman or woman, right? If it were black, it would be like the man of the church. This is kind of cool. I'm, guess, I'm guessing it ties, maybe? 
Wow, they really did take a lot of pictures. I really like that. I also can't tell if this is part of the pattern. Like, do they teach you how to do that little, I don't know what it is, beading or embroidery or something? But here, so that's the pattern cover. Oh, so that's the dress and the skirt together. And this is the tunic and the pants together. And this is the dress by itself. Here's the line drawings. I see now, okay. So yeah, I'm guessing they teach you how to do that. I mean, that's kind of cool. This is fun, how it ties on the side like that. I think that's cute. And then here's our elastic waist skirt and our elastic waist pant with little like uh, slits on the side of the cuff fish looking thing. <laughs> um, here, let's, I like to look at the envelope on this screen. It's bigger for you guys. Okay, so yeah, batik, chambray, cotton, gingham, lightweight linen, seersucker, shirtings, silky types. And then, yeah, applique is optional. So four inches by eight inches of fabric remnants each of three different colors. And I guess there's pattern pieces to like replicate that. That's kind of cool. This, this is a no. I don't know about, does, I mean, is there anybody out there who would wear these two together like that and not just wear it like this? This is super cute and stylish in my opinion. This is a little long for me. I would rather it be a little bit shorter, but um, still like, you know, not awful. This is just, I don't know what that is. Even like they styled her hair differently. It just makes her look very matronly. Um, okay, so here's all this finished garment measurements. Of course they give us <laughs> the hip measurement on something that is like so voluminous where it doesn't really matter. But um, okay, so bust and hip for the A and B and then C and D. What is all that? A, B, A. So A and B are the dress and, or the, yeah, the dress and tunic. And C and D are the skirt and pants. Okay, that makes sense. I wonder if they gave us the hip for C and D because C and D don't have a bodice. Maybe that's like the rule, the standard rule of when they give us the hip and when they don't. Hmm. All right, and here's the line drawings again. Okay, next up we have this little number. Uh, they're calling it a Mrs. and Miss Petite Dress. All right, I don't know necessarily what that means, what the difference is, other than sizing. But you've got a like drop shoulder into this gathered sleeve with a gathered cuff. You've got darting here maybe a waistband all the way around and then this little tie sewn in and then this little scoopy doop um, neckline pencil skirt here's a version with a fuller skirt yeah full waist uh, seam there and center front seam too which I missed the first time here's a longer sleeve here it is without the sleeve and just a little drop shoulder this is probably super fun to sew i bet it's a facing too um here's what the girl was wearing the model here's a little houndstooth version with a narrow skirt gathered skirt in the back that fits her very well center back invisible seam invisible zipper and then here's the pattern artwork 
it's cute. Uh, I think that in this feels like a very crispy, you know, cotton probably. If you had something with a little bit more drape to it, it would be less like, I don't know, boxy looking. But at the same time, like that's what makes the sleeve stand up so well. That's what gives such great shape in the skirt. So part of me is like, well, maybe you need something a little bit more structured. But this bodice, I feel like, I feel like it wants to relax a little bit. Especially, well, they don't really have a picture of her without her arms up, but. You know, if you can imagine her arms hanging by her side, like most of us don't just stand around like this with <laughs> posing and all. Um, it feels like it would be a little, like through here, how you can see, I don't know, maybe something a little bit lighter would, would just drape a little bit better in the bodice. And especially for those that have this skirt, I don't know, that could go either way too. Kind of cuter in the drawing than it is on her though. Not because of her, but 2D version versus 3D version. Okay, brocade, chambray, cotton, crepe, lightweight poplin, sateen, and silky types. Yeah, like maybe a crepe would be cool, especially in the fuller skirt. Sateen is, maybe that's what they used on her. All right, so what do we have? Must, yeah, so there's your invisible zipper and there's no lining, so I'm assuming that neckline is um, has a facing. And then you have your finished bust measurements. And then here's our line drawings. I don't know, I'd have to see, oh, there's a little bend here too that I missed on the modeled versions. I, I'm interested to see some people make this up. I'm kind of on the fence about this. It could be cute. It's definitely different with the sleeve thing going on here and this neckline and even this little tie thing, which obviously you could leave off if you didn't like bows. I like the relaxed kind of, you know what it might be really cute in is like a sweater like a mid-weight sweater knit or like a double knit or something like that, you know, where you can get kind of like the relaxed, slouchy feel of this style of bodice, but still enough structure to hold the skirt. All right, next up, oh gosh, we're bringing by the Peter Pan collar. It's been a minute since I've seen one of those. I dig this model though, although Simplicity's models are always really young. Okay, so we've got a Peter Pan collar with, I'm guessing a set-in sleeve, hard to tell, a uh, gathered skirt, pretty basic. You even have a lapped zipper. It's not invisible, it's a regular zipper. Yeah, gathered skirt, here it is. Oh, that's cute with the tights. Yeah, that is a pretty straightforward dress. They're calling it the baby doll dress. Now my interpretation of baby doll is that it's a pretty relaxed, like not super fitted through the waist. Um, so this is to me is kind of somewhere in the middle between baby doll and fit and flare. But you can see they've got this version, the sleeveless, the little three little buttons, that's cute. This is your standard bodice with the darts and the gathered skirt. Um, here it is with the collar and then there you have a longer sleeve drafted as well. It's interesting, I just haven't seen baby doll collars anywhere in the stores, runways, nothing. So that's an interesting choice to include that. If you don't have um, a pattern that has kind of this simple straightforward design, this would be a really good one to like get the fit just right and then you could do a gajillion different versions of it. Um, okay, so Shally Shintz Cotton, I don't even know what this is. Is that like that stiff shiny stuff like Wame but stiffer maybe? 
flannel, linen, silky types, jersey. Oh, so you can even go, go full on knit with it. Um, you need a zipper, buttons, elastic cording. I wonder what the elastic cording is for. Oh, maybe the back. Um, let's look at the line drawings. The back might have a loop and a button. I don't know what else it would be for. Oh, for A only. Well, that can't be it. Oh, maybe this? Yeah, there's a little loop and button right here. Wow, that's a detail I would have totally overlooked. <laughs> yeah. So zipper buttons and then single fold bias tape and three buttons for D. Oh, for your arms. Uh, the arm sire is finished with uh, bias tape. Okay. So yeah, like I said, pretty standard, straightforward. It's one of those, if you're a beginner and you're just building up your pattern collection, this is one of those great, just kind of basic designs that you could use as a jumping off point for just about anything. You know, you can change the neckline, you can change the sleeve, you can change the skirt, you could do all kinds of different stuff once you've got this basic fit down. And then the sizing on this is the 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. All right, now we've got a little, I hate, the, I hate that they're calling them kimono jackets because kimono is a very specific thing and this is not that. They should just call it a robe, you know. All right, this is alphanumeric and all the sizes are in one pattern. So we've got this little crossover with the, I do like the fun uh, like pattern blocking that they're doing. That's cool how it alternates. This feels a little sloppy to me. Like, did they not iron it? Um, here's one in a really beautiful like embroidered mesh I guess or like a burnout velvet or something that's really pretty cute little lightweight you know throw on cover up keep your arms covered and somewhat warm here's a solid here's the one the model was wearing here's the one the other model was wearing and then here she is kind of smock-ish, you know, the length of it. But I like hers a lot. That's really cute, especially with like the satin. So it kind of like reminiscent of a tuxedo. This is a very like luxurious high-end type of cover-up, I think. And then here's her back view. Very full through the back, full through the arm. But yeah, this sheer version is really calling my name. And then here they both are together. Yeah, this one's cute. And I imagine you could also do it in like Jersey too. Um, and get like a, you know, opaque version. That's fun. Okay envelope back batik lawn crepe de chine double georgette linen silky sheer yeah i wish they would have broken it out by version so that you would say like version a has these fabrics and version b has these fabrics or whatever a b c d whatever it is but they didn't um and then you need three quarters of a yard of three eighths of an inch wide ribbon i'm guessing that's what that is for this version, but you could also make that out of self fabric. All right. Yep, the contrast is all broken out. Finished garment measurements of the bust. And then 
here's our line drawings. I can't really tell the difference between A and B now. Because I think B is supposed to be shaded here and here to show the contrast. And then C. Oh, look, C even has these little vents on the sleeve, which the other sleeve does not have. I dig C. All right. Oh, this is cute. This is a wrap cardigan with variations. Let's learn about the variations. So we've got a pretty wide neck, casual, you know, drop shoulder wrap cardigan. This version is longer with like a tulip hem, also very cute. This is a like a shorter sleeve that you could also do not in a sweater knit. You could do this in cotton, in jersey, in lots of different things. Here's one that doesn't tie in buttons instead. That's really cute, especially for those like double knits or like a like a thicker sweater knit. That would be cute. Here's that same version that ties this is the one she's wearing. Yeah, this is cute. I think this is going to sell really well for them. Especially if you're transitioning your summer tank tops and short sleeve tops, you could throw this on and you know, those would last another season. Here's the back. I like the cropped length a lot. Like where it hits on the high hip, I really like that. That just looks super comfortable to me. And I like a lot of these versions, which is usually the determining factor for me if a pattern's gonna end up in my stash or not. I have to see myself making at least two, if not all of the versions. Okay, size for stretch knits only. So bamboo knit, which is really light, modal knit, similar, sweater knits, thicker, pick a knit rule, which they'll show you if your knit is stretchy enough or not. And then thread, clear elastic, that's probably for the neckline, a button, grosgrain ribbon for the, for the inside tie, and then a big button. And then you have your finished bust measurements. Cute. Here they all are again. Yeah, I think I have a lot of fabrics in my stash that would work really well for this. And like I said, this one can be just about anything under the sun. Still, you probably have to wear a camisole underneath it because the neckline is fairly wide. But you can make it out of a lot of fabrics, and I bet it doesn't even take that much fabric. How much? What is that, D? D, yeah, less than a yard for, well, up to one and three-eighths. But we all know we can scooch it out of one yard even. Cute. All right. Now we've got, oh, this is a fun little sweater. Oh, super fun. All right, let's get into it. Look how cool. It's like a velvet strapping or something. Oh, that's very hip. Oh, look, all these versions. Okay, here's a center front one. Now this comes up really high. <laughs> that's like your belly button, I think. <laughs> there's this one with a contrast sleeve. This one has patches, okay. And then here's the one the model's wearing. Very relaxed fit. That's cute. Let's find out more about this little strapping detail. Uh, let's go here. Okay, size for stretch knit only. Fleece, minky, trico, modal, bamboo, sweater knit. And then the patch is in like some kind of woven fabric. Uh, so thread, single fold bias tape for C. C is single fold bias tape. 
wonder where that goes. And one yard wide of ribbon or twill tape. So you can just buy a yard of one inch wide anything. It looks to me like they used like a some kind of velvet ribbon. Right? Didn't it look like it was textured to you? But I wonder if you could also do like, I don't know, leather or who knows what. Package of one and one eighth wide. I'm wondering if that is what's inside here and then you attach this strapping just for what is visible on the outside. That would be a guess. But I love um, the idea of something kind of coming up a little bit on the hip and then swooping back down. That's very flattering and elongates the leg line. All right, so here's everything that you need and then they give you finished bust measurements. Oh, D has a different bust measurement. I wonder why that is. Oh, because it's more fitted. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> D is more fitted. Okay. This is D. Where's D? Yeah, I guess it's just closer fitted because of all this ruching. That's still really cute too. And I guess you don't have to tie it up as high. Um, you know, you could have it only come up to the top of your uh, waistband. It also has these bell sleeves too, whereas this one has like a closer fitting sleeve. Cute. I really like this one. I like this one a lot. Yeah, I would make this. I would make this. And then, like, I don't know, maybe, depending on if I were just trying to bust into the stash or something. Okay, look at this blazer. A raglan sleeve blazer, that's kind of cool. Of course, they did the velvet with the contrast satin, so it's like, you know, a tuxedo, like a velvet tuxedo, that's super cool. Kind of asymmetrical something going on here, that's fun. Mm, this one, not so much. <laughs> what is happening? So notched collar on this one, you have a cuff with a little slit in it, patch pockets, and then two, it's like a double breasted situation happening. Here's a longer version of that one in a like wool plaid, which looks a little bit better. I don't know why this one looks so unflattering. Yeah, it's just not, I mean, of course there's, you know, not a lot happening waist definition wise. Um, and maybe it's just hitting her at this really wide part. I don't know, this doesn't look great on her, which makes me think it's not gonna look great on me. But this is a cool one with it tying on the side and one patch pocket, that's kind of fun. That one had a button. This must be what that green one is. That's cool. I still want it shorter. I'm just a fan of shorter blazers, personally. Okay, it looks better unbuttoned. This fabric, though, it looks cheap. Here's the back. I really dig the raglan sleeve. Center back seam, so you could get some shaping in there if you wanted. Um, yeah. Oh, and of course they put the least flattering one right up front. They should have put the picture of her with it unbuttoned because that would have been much better. Okay, let's look at the line drawings first before the envelope. Mm. I mean, I would love to get a new blazer this season. I love little jackets in the fall and winter. I don't know if this is the one. Mm. 
Okay, brocade, corduroy, crepe, gabardine, denim, linen, twill, velveteen, wool, ponte. Oh, ponte could be fun. Uh, let's see. Jacket with interfacing. So, yeah, it's an unlined jacket. This lining is just for the collar. And then two yards of fusible interfacing. Where is that going? Maybe the entire front is interfaced and then unlined? That can't be right. That sounds terrible. And then you get your bust measurement and that's it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening with the interfacing. A snap and a button. Huh. Yeah, Simplicity just does not do a great job describing. I mean, this is the this is literally the description. So uh, I don't know where all the interfacing is going. But who wants that against their skin? I must be missing something. No, there's no lining. And oh, well, maybe it's self. Maybe there's like a self-facing uh, type of situation happening. And then that is what is in our face. That has to be it. Let's hope so. All right, so you've got your 10 to 18 and then your 20 to 28 sizing. All right, here is a blouse with cummerbund, cummerbund. I'm guessing this little doodad here, it comes off. High neck with a little V. This reminds me of that jumpsuit that I made for my sew along for the holidays. It had a similar thing, not as tall as this one, but similar. Here's the top without the cummerbund, which also some uh, pleats and a gathered uh, sleeve cap. You could also lengthen this into a dress if you wanted one of those. And then here's it with the cummerbund and a short sleeve. Here's a long sleeve with a cuff. Here's the version the model's wearing with this elasticized cuff. This is looking a little short on her. I don't know if it's intended to be a three-quarter sleeve or what, but even when their arms are down, it's like a few inches off of the cummerbund buttons in the back. What do you guys think about this cummerbund, like a separate belt thing happening? Yay, nay. It would be super cool if you did the top in like, I don't know, some fabric. And then you did this in like a leather, a suede, a velvet, something contrasting. You know, that would be cool. Lightweight burnouts, cotton lawn, crepe de chine, double georgette, silky types. Okay. Thread, button, button, elastic, buttons, okay. And then you have your bust measurements. All right, pretty straightforward. I just wonder, I mean, that cummerbund doesn't have a ton of wear ease. I wonder how comfortable it would be. And this fabric I feel like is not right because it's bunching really weird above the cummerbund. Okay, six to 14 and then 14 to 22 on the sizing. Okay, this could be cute. I don't really love this fabric. It reminds me of a um, nurse's scrubs, like a pattern they would have on those. But we have some cool details happening. So we've got this yoke and it's gathered here. And then I think this is all one piece. So that would be a kind of 
dolmen. Here you can see it better here. See how there's no sleeve, shoulder, seam thing happening? Um, that makes it super easy to cut out. There's like, I bet, one, two, three, four pieces, pat pattern pieces. Yeah, super great to um, color block. Or you could even do this in a sheer, since it's not really showing anything. And that would be cute. There's this. And here it is with a little like cuff. There's also something happening here. I don't know if that's just top stitching. Uh oh, they forgot a thread. I don't know about the design of this sleeve. That little like whale fin, shark fin thing happening is not super cute. Right? Do y'all think that's cute? Maybe. There's a little um, button with a loop. Uh, what is that called? It just fell out of my head. And then the back gathered yoke too. All right, let's see what's up with the different versions. So I'm thinking A has a narrower sleeve and it's just not uh, drafted well for over the shoulder, but B seems to have a larger drapier sleeve, so I'd like to see that one. And then D would gather in all of this so your little shark fin would go away. Hmm. What is happening? Oh. <laughs> um, let's see if this gives us any more. You know, even in this little drawing it's showing it with like... I guess you... I'm not very well versed in drafting. I've never studied it, but if you wanted this to lay flatter, you would actually need to build in, it, this would need to come out more like this, which I'm wondering if that's what this looks like. You'd have to, you'd have to buy the pattern and open it up and compare the sleeves to each other. But this one has the gathers in the front and then this one has whatever this is. And I don't know if that's just top stitching, if it's kind of like a band. Okay. Charmeuse, cotton lawn, crepe de chine, double georgette, silky types, voile. Yeah, pretty lightweight, drapey stuff. A little bit of elastic according for the back closure. You can barely need any fabric at all. I mean, look at this one. You can get that out of, oh, it's a contrast. I was like, what the heck? I've never seen a three quarter yard wonder before. And then your bust measurements. I have something similar, which is why I'm not totally in love with it, but it's a cute little top. Oh, a little knit cardigan. How fun is this? Well, that looks nice. I think this is a Ponte. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. And then they found, of course, coordinating rib knit. Good luck with that. One of the beauties of being in New York City is that you probably could find stuff like that. I don't know if I could even find that here in Charlotte. Especially something this wide. Um, ready to wear jeans. That's interesting. Cute cardigan though. The banded cardi. Again, fairly short. It hits on her high hip. So keep that in mind. Here's the back. Okay, size for stretch knits only. Double knit, jersey, stretch velvet, novelty sweater knits. Bands and stretchable knit fabric. That's all they tell you. You have your thread, buttons. Yeah, it's a tubular situation. Oh, I wish I knew more about like where to buy that if you guys wanted this, but I just, 
I don't know a lot about rib knits, especially tubes. But maybe if you searched Amazon, Etsy, places like that, you might be able to find it. And then you have your finished bust measurement. I appreciate that they've included that on every single one of the patterns we've looked at so far. You have your 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22 size ranges. Okay, Mimi's back with another pattern. This one is a top, a skirt, and vest. Is it this top? That's cute. The vest is super cute, too. I don't love this cording, but you could find, you know, other stuff. The skirt, mm, I don't know about the skirt either. Let's see this version. I mean, the little turtleneck is really cute. I like this too. I don't know that I'd do it in satin. And this just looks twisted. I mean, okay. It's a cute little office look. I just don't go to an office anymore. Maybe that's why I'm a little bit like, where would I wear this? But I do love the vest, not necessarily in a suiting. I'm trying to think of what else I would make the vest out of that would be wearable. Maybe some like lightweight wool, you know, in like a grayish, like a light gray color. Or, hmm, I'll have to think on that. No back views in photos. This feels wider than this though, yeah? It's two skirts, I think. Let's look at the line drawings. Okay, oh, the turtleneck zips in the back. That's kind of cool. That means you could make it in a less stretchy fabric and still get it over your head. Look how cute the vest is. I love the line drawing of the vest a lot. Maybe even a suede-ish? I could do suede. And then, okay, so no, the skirts are the same. You just have different lengths. Side zipper, I do like that on a skirt. I don't know, you know, I've, I've recently kind of been doubting myself in skirts, so I think normally I would be like, this is cute, but I think I might be writing off skirts for a little while. But that vest and top, I'm kind of actually really digging. 10 to 18 and then 20 to 28 on the sizing, so that's good. The um, finished bust and hip measurements. A and B, oh yeah, A and B would have different busts because one's more close fitting. All right. Uh, so the little turtleneck is for stretch knits only. Jacquard, spandex, stretch velvet, interlock. And then the vest and skirts, chalet, lawn, cotton, crepe, denim, linen, corduroy, satin, and lightweight wool. Yeah, none of those really jump out at me, but maybe, yeah, maybe a little suede. So that little belt thing then, is that, she just added that on her own accord? Yeah, I think so. You don't, I mean, it's not like you needed a pattern. It's a piece of rope tied into a, tied into a bow that you might have like sewn on some leather little ends, but this is what you get. This is what it normally looks like. I don't know. That's kind of cool. I like the monochromatic look too. Uh, this could be a maybe. This could be a maybe. All right, now we've got this wrap skirt. Well, she looks cool. I like it with the crop sweater. So it's got this big yoke and this full, very full skirt. I'm trying to, I can't really tell what's happening down here. I also, what's up with I don't like uh, how the pattern, uh, not that they should be straight lines all the way down, but maybe this could have been on the bias or something. I don't know. Here's this version. Okay. 
here's one with buttons. Okay, here's a high-low hem. And here's another high-low hem with a tie instead of a button. Here's the back view. It looks like there's a seam here. I mean, I don't know. She looks so cool. It makes me feel like maybe I would look cool. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is her belly button, so it sits right on the hip. I don't know about this. Do you guys like this? Cotton, flannel, double gauze, gingham, linen, poplin, seersucker, silky types, flaw. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely limit it to like solid colors, maybe a plaid. I, well, I mean, that floral one seemed sort of cute too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So you need some snaps to hold it closed on the inside and then either like self ties or a button or four buttons. I think it would depend on how long your legs are and if you could pull off a full midi skirt like that. It could it could go frumpy really quickly. But it takes hardly any fabric, although I can get a dress out of two yards if I'm being honest. So there's that. And then you get the finished hip measurement, but not the finished waist measurement. Oh me, oh my. Oh, this one even has, um, oh, they all have back darts. And then carriers? For, oh, I guess because this wraps around. Yeah, that's, well, okay. I mean, I'm kind of intrigued by these two with the high-low hem. I don't know though. I just literally finished saying how I was kind of writing off skirts for a little while. Like what is wrong with me? Okay, we've got pants and skirts. Okay, high-waisted pants with like belt, a belt, um, a little notched waistband and um, pleats. I wish she would pose without her hands in her pockets because that does nothing for me. Here's the skirt. Cute. Here's the skirt without the notched waistband and it has this little tie thingy sewn in instead. Here's the similar pants version of that. No waistband at all actually, it just has a facing. And then here's the version she's wearing. Those look cool to me. Yeah, they fit well. I'm guessing this is some kind of like, maybe a chino, but you can see, this is why I don't like slash pockets because if you have any kind of curvy bottom, to get this to not gape open is impossible. Um, I prefer them when they look like this, like jeans. Um, but if they're, if they are, is this the side seam? Oh, that seems very far back. So now I'm thinking that there is never going to be enough coverage. I'd have to muslin this 800 times because I need more room in the back than I do in the front. This side seam would need to be. That's bizarre, right? It needs to be at the side of her body, way, 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 way over here. But maybe it's just the angle which she's standing. That's also a distinct possibility. Let's look at the line drawings and see if that is intentional or if it's just, no, yeah, they want it to be on the side. So yeah, I would highly recommend a muslin, but I feel like, so those um, Vogue pants that I made, Oh, the coral ones, you know, for the Style Maker Fabrics Spring Tour. Similar leg line. 
high waisted, which I liked. I mean, maybe I could make these work if I was ready to like, you know, really hunker down and like do a lot of muzzle and ink. Okay, cotton types, lightweight denim, linen types, micro suede, poplin, twill, lightweight wool. Yeah, I think those, um, what are they, the like rayon twills would be really nice. A little invisible zipper and twill tape. One and a half yards of twill tape. What is that for? What year was that? 80? Is that for this little tie thing? Is that supposed to be twill tape? That's sad. Why don't I just make it out of cell fabric? Or like, I don't know, something else. Leather, suede, velvet, something. Okay, we need an interfacing for your face band or your waistband, whatever. Oh, look at all these. Okay, you have your hip measurements. No waist, but your hip measurements, your length, and your widths. Okay. We'll see. I want to like it. I don't know though. This makes me nervous. Like I need several more inches across the back here. But they could be cute. They look cute like this. All right. Oh, the sizing is 4 to 12 and then 12 to 20. Dang it, never mind. I might not be able to fit a 20. Where is the finished hip of a 20? Finished hip of a 20 is 46. Wait, which one is the pants? Pants are A and B. Okay, I barely fit into a 20. So keep that in mind. All right, slim leg pant with variations. Oh, look at these hems. I like the French tuck. Look, that's kind of fun. Something different. All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. Side seam pockets. That's even worse than the slanty pockets. They even look on her yeah they're staying closed well good for her and her straightish figure that ain't happening for me I like this little button detail though that's cute okay and I think this is the version she's wearing I can't believe they put a side seam pocket on those pants. This would be like three inches <laughs> open <laughs> if I were wearing them. And then you've got a single welt, maybe? Also, look, they changed her shoes for this picture. I wonder what that's about. See, different shoes. Just the little weird things that I had noticed from time to time. All right, let's get into the um, line drawings first. Yeah, a single welt pocket, gosh, side seam pockets. You have your traditional pant, it, otherwise it's got, you know, your waistband with the belt carriers and the zip front, the fly front, all of that. And then you've got a longer length, a cropped length, a crop length with these little buttons. Oh, the buttons are in the back. That's also really cute. And then this one is shorter in the front and longer in the back. I just, I don't know about this. It seems like a nightmare to fit. And I see it's why it's important that they put waist and hip because for me, it's about the grading from one to the other. How different is the waist to the hip? 
um, because if I have to fit my waist and then the hip measurement for that for my waist size is like six inches bigger or something then I'm gonna have to do so much altering do you know what I'm saying that's why I just like to know I'm assuming it's pretty straight. I'm assuming the difference between the waist and the hip is not very much. So this would be even more musliming than the last one for me. So like my waist, well, it's not that far off. If I'm going by the body measurement chart, which, you know, I don't normally do, I would much rather rely on finished garment measurements, but. And then ironically, they provided a bust measurement, even though there's no bust. I don't know why they do that. Okay. Fabrics are gabardine, lightly denim, ponte, PK would be great, sateen, stretch wovens, stretch twill would be nice. Just, you know, for extra airing, uh, wearing ease and wool types. Yeah, that's a no on the side seam pockets too. I keep forgetting about that. There's a men's blazer. That's Mimi G's new husband. That looks like a really nice blazer. But we're going to skip over that. We've got a sweatshirt mini dress. I thought we were done with these. There's, okay. Sure does look comfy. I would wear that to bed in a heartbeat. Drop shoulder again. Here's one with a hood. Here's one with a kangaroo pocket. Please tell me they give you this polar bear applique pattern piece. That would be awesome. This has like a more exaggerated cuff and also like a high-low hem. This one has a hood and might just be the one she's wearing. This is a pajama, right? Nobody's wearing that outside. Neck band. It's got a little hem band. Oh, here she is standing up. Yeah, just really slouchy and relaxed. All right, this girl's going to bed or lounging at home. I don't know, those are Ugg, though. Ugg boots though. You can wear those outside. Very oversized through here, very oversized, but then again, she's got a really small frame. There's less wrinkling going on on this one. But this is also a more structured uh, sweatshirt fleece. So, this one could be cool. This one could be cool. I don't even know where to start with this. Let's go to those. Um, let's go to the envelope back and see they call out that yep applique one five inch by eight inch piece of fabric so you can put a polar bear on your kangaroo pocket they only give you the finished bust measurements which is really not helpful because the bust is like the widest part i need the hip measurement um, and your twill tape is for your like hoodie drawstring Alphanumeric sizing. It looks like it's all in one. Yeah, all in one. So you could make these would be this would be a great pattern if you wanted to make pajamas for your entire family, like some people do. Um, you have all the sizes for everybody in the family. Okay. You want to see any line drawings? I mean, I don't hate the kangaroo pocket. I just don't know about putting a polar bear on it. All right, oh, there's a little girl's outfit. 
little girls, little girls, an apron, vintage costumes already. Oh my God, look at this one though. And then more costumes. That might have been the last one. Oh, another dog outfit. Ooh. And then, wow, okay, <laughs> some stuffed animals. All right, well, that looks like that's it for simplicity. What did you guys think? I'm not incredibly wowed, if I'm being perfectly honest. Nothing's really jumping out at me as something that I really, really have to have. This is up there, but I might forget about it by this afternoon. This, though, actually, I could see, but I had forgotten about it until now, but maybe that'll stay with me. Um, this is a maybe. Pants are a maybe. This is a probably not. But well, I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you find some stuff that fit your style? Um, let me know in the comments below. Try to reference some, like, the pink dress or, like, you know, the robe or whatever, the cardigan, the wrap cardigan, something like that. I don't really remember the um, item numbers. So um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If this makes you excited for fall sewing or if you're just going to power through with the um, summer patterns you've got. That is going to do it for me today, though, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.